It was around the time when I started working in the subway outlet as a cashier. Before I got this job, I had heard many things about the outlet. Many horrifying incidents that had happened there reported by people who lived there. It was not like I did not believe them. Instead, I was the one who believed in these horrifying incidents more than others, and was terrified about them. But due to the terrible financial conditions of my family, I had to accept this job because it was the only job who was offering a handsome amount. The first day on the job, I was terrified as hell, imagining many possible horrors that I could have encountered. When I reached the outlet, the first person I encountered was the old man who was the owner of the place. He looked around his 60s and was pretty weak for his age. The man welcomed me humbly and told me about the outlet and how things worked around there. As he was explaining to me about everything, it was hard not to notice him fumbling in every sentence. After explaining, he gave me the keys, saying that I would be the one opening and closing the outlet every day as well. He never gave me the option of rejecting it and leaving. There was not any customer at the moment so I looked around the outlet before starting the work. It looked quite old but clean, so after looking around for a while, I started my work. I noticed there were not many people who came to the outlet, and the old man did not come by very often as well, so I continued working there, and even after a week when I did not witness any paranormal activity, I felt a bit relieved thinking it must just be rumors created by people, but still, deep down, I was terrified that it might be true as well. One night when I was about to close the outlet, I heard footsteps coming from the employee bathroom. Thinking it must be a customer, I said in a loud voice, Customer, can you hurry up? I'm about to close the outlet. As I said that, the noises stopped all of a sudden, and I did not think much about it at the time and continued cleaning up. But when no one exited the bathroom for a while, I started to feel scared thinking that it could be a ghost or something. But then a few minutes later, the old man came out, and I let out a sigh of relief that was not what I was thinking. I called out to him, but he ignored me and continued walking to the kitchen. Even after me calling for him multiple times, when he did not respond, I figured he could not hear me. I followed him to the kitchen and noticed that it looked like a hospital room instead of the kitchen but I could clearly remember that it looked nothing like this because I had been here multiple times. The old man also started to look a lot younger than his age, and that was when I noticed him walking toward a bed where a patient was lying. His eyes were wrapped with a blindfold, and his hands and legs were tied to the bed with chains. The old man took out surgical knives and other surgical equipment and started to perform surgery but when he started to remove the man's organs one by one and then left him dead, I figured out what was going on around over there. Then all of a sudden, the old man performing surgery disappeared and the room went dark. The man who was lying on the bed and was dead opened his eyes and looked at me. And that was when some more people wearing patient clothes appeared. Each one of them had something in common. They all were missing parts of their body, and one of them had no eyes. He came closer to my face and said, Leave this place. And then they all started to chant the same thing. At this point, I had been terrified as hell and started to pee in my pants. I was so scared that it did not even bother me, because I was feeling as if my heart was going to burst with the terror and horror that I was witnessing. I ran outside while stumbling and falling on my way out. It was hard to gather the strength and the courage to stand up and leave the place, but I still managed to exit the outlet somehow without closing it. Even though I was terrified as hell, I decided to tell the old man who was the owner of the place about leaving and calling on his phone. Surprisingly, the number was not connecting, even after trying multiple times. So I went to his address and rang the bell of his house. I was trembling throughout the entire process, but instead of the old man, a guy in his 20s came out. I told him that the old man hired me for the subway outlet and I was quitting. The guy looked at me with a weird look that I could understand because I had the same look last night. It was the look of getting scared to his pants. 
he replied in a trembling voice. It's not possible. My father died 15 years ago in a fire, and even though he owned the hospital building, the outlet's not owned by us. I froze at the place, horror-struck, staring at him with frightening eyes. It was not just him shaking like a leaf, but me as well. Somehow, I managed to move from the place and walk towards my apartment. The scene from the day I got the job to the last night played continuously in my head. After coming to my apartment, I slowly and quietly started trembling with fear, packed my stuff, and decided to leave the place. As I was standing at the bus stop waiting for the bus, an old man looked at me with pitiful eyes while asking me the reason for leaving the place. He turned out to be one of the oldest citizens of the town and told me the story of the place. That outlet was built over one of the oldest buildings around the town, and many said that the building used to be a hospital where multiple illegal experiments were performed on the patients. The doctor was mentally ill, but no one knew about it. He used to perform weird surgeries on patients who were either orphan or had no one to look after them. And before the building became completely abandoned, there was a huge fire and the doctor who performed the surgery along with the patients was burnt to his death. As he finished his story, I noticed my bus coming in my direction. I turned my head to thank him and noticed that there was no one around me. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. It was one late night when I was working on some new designs to present at my upcoming meeting, and since it was for a new company we had recently signed a contract with, it had to be perfect. All of a sudden, I started to feel hungry, so I decided to go to the subway outlet near that was 24 hours open. I grabbed my wallet and wore a jacket because it was the time when the weather used to get a little chilly during the night. After that, I headed inside the house and since the place wasn't that far from my place, I decided to walk there. As I was walking towards the place, I noticed three SUV vans parked near my abandoned hospital building. It felt a bit weird and out of place, but I ignored it and continued walking. About 20 minutes later, I reached the outlet, but it looked like there was no one there. The outlet was open, but there wasn't a single staff in sight. Because I was hungry and had no other option at the moment, I decided to wait there for anyone to show up. I kept waiting for about more than half an hour, but no one showed up, so I thought that I should wait a little while longer and if no one comes, I would leave the place and head back home. I checked the time on my wristwatch and it was 12.20am, more than an hour had passed, and I looked around to see if anyone was coming or not. Trust me, still, there wasn't a single soul in sight so I decided to go to the washroom and then head back home. I went to the washroom because it had been a while since I was holding my pee. It took me around 10 minutes there, and as I exited the washroom, I saw an old looking employee standing over the counter. I walked to him and asked where he has been for the past hour. He did not respond and kept staring at me. It did not seem like he would be answering my question anytime soon so I decided to order the dishes that I had already decided on an hour ago. After giving him my order, my paying for it, I went back to my seat and started to wait for it to arrive. Another half an hour passed, and that employee had disappeared again, and all of it was getting annoying. I slammed my hand over the counter and shouted, This is getting absurd! Do you guys not value your customers or what? As I said that, a man wearing the clothes of a watchman came outside while rubbing his eyes and asked me what had happened. As I told him about the situation and about the employee that had been making me wait for more than hours, he looked at me with a terrified expression, as if he had seen a real-life ghost or something. Was the man half bald and wearing a knitted blue scarf sloppily? He asked in a trembling voice. Yes? I hesitated a bit at his reaction, but then replied in a hesitant voice. His face went pale from my response, 
and I could tell he wasn't acting or anything, but he was terrified by the description of that employee. He turned around slowly and started to walk out of the outlet. As he was walking out, I called out for him multiple times, but he did not respond once. I turned toward the counter, and the old man was standing there staring at me while holding my order. His sudden appearance gave me a jump scare, but since I could not understand the situation, I asked him about the watchman that was just here a few seconds ago. Unlike the watchman, he looked unfazed when I asked him about it. He stared at me for a while, and then let out a long sigh. I know many people say this to me to make me feel guilty, but that watchman died a long time ago, and I don't feel even a bit of remorse or guilt about killing the guy because he raped and murdered my five-year-old granddaughter. He went silent after speaking for the first time and kept his head down. I took my order and went back to the seat and continued eating. While eating, I looked over the counter again, and that employee was gone again. As I finished eating and was about to stand up, I felt a presence in my back, so I turned to get another jump scare by the old employee standing closer to my ears and asking, how was the food? It was good, thank you, I replied while holding my chest because it was beating like crazy. The employee turned to leave, and I felt my eyes popping out of my head from the horrifying scene and my heart thumping even louder. The back head was bleeding and there was a deep wound over it. The blood wasn't dripping on the floor, so I figured the man was another ghost. I hurriedly stood up to leave before I could pass out from the extreme terror, and as I was leaving the outlet, I encountered another young-looking employee, and all I could think about was that this person must be a ghost as well, just like the other two employees. I screamed a frightened scream and started to run toward my apartment. After reaching my apartment, I went directly to my room and curled all over my bed, all terrified and trembling. I decided to Google the place online. And when I did, I found out that about four years ago, a man murdered a watchman at night in the subway outlet and ended up dying in between the struggle. Apparently, the watchman was a sex offender and had sexually assaulted many girls, one day kidnapping the granddaughter of an employee working in the subway and murdered the poor soul after raping her. When the employee found out about it, he killed the man in a fit of rage. And when the watchman was struggling to free himself, the employee's head got bumped into a stone and he started bleeding. Still, the employee managed to kill the watchman, but ended up dying from excessive bleeding through his head. Ever since then, there have been many incidents reported that people have been seeing those two at night. This happened last year during my student exchange in France and was probably only two weeks before COVID imploded. I had to head back to my home country, and that night there was a language exchange at a bar, maybe 30 minutes away from me on the subway. My roommate didn't seem interested in going, so I decided to make this my first night out alone, so I had already talked to the organizers of the event and they seemed really nice. Plus, the subway in Paris on Fridays closes at around 1.30 a.m., so I knew I had time to go meet people and get home relatively safely. I got there maybe half an hour late, got my little flag stickers that indicated the languages I spoke, and headed into the crowd to try and talk to people. Everything was pleasant. I made friends with the group of guys, and we made good small talk for a solid hour. After a while, the group decided to split, and trying to find others to actually exchange languages with since we were all speaking English. At this point, I headed over to the bar to get myself a drink. We're a group of what I can only describe as chaps, but French started annoying me about the flag on my shirt, a Chilean flag. They threw everything out there. Is it in Africa or is it Colombia? At first, I didn't mind correcting them, but it got old pretty quick. After I realized they were just messing around, I left them to it and started talking to an older man by the bar. You seem nice enough. After talking to him for about 30 minutes, he headed off. And that's when the creepy encounter started. 
a random guy in his mid-twenties, early thirties showed up next to me at the bar and started making conversation by saying, Oh, I immediately know your flag was from. I just smiled at him. Then he started the, Oh, you're very beautiful talk. Look, as a 21-year-old woman, this isn't my first time in this situation. Usually if men aren't being overtly creepy, I'll just smile. Maybe give conversation a try. But if they keep pushing, I just go. I said thanks and kept nursing my drink, hoping he caught the sign that I wasn't trying to talk. He kept asking me about where I was from, why I was here, where I was staying to which I gave him vague short answers when out of nowhere, and I really mean out of absolutely nowhere, he'd said something along the lines of, I'm in love with you. Dude, what? I've directed maybe 20 words in total to this man, and I'm getting a full love confession? I let out a laugh. There was half nerves laugh. Are you kidding me? And at this point, He's forcing eye contact, really intense eye contact. I tried everything. I'm not interested. I'm in a relationship. I even headed towards my last resort, which was saying that I was a lesbian, which is true. But he would not budge. He said, I respect that. It's not your fault. What, that I'm lesbian? And he kept on going with what I considered to be the creepiest part. I want to do romantic things with you, he said. Excuse me, you what? This set me off and that negative gut feeling is one of those phrases that is just off enough that your brain goes, hmm, not dinner, not a date, not something just romantic. Well, I wasn't about to find out what it meant. I put on my full bitch face that said, look, I know you're just trying to be nice, but I'm not interested and I am in a committed relationship. I got up and he tried to touch my arm, to which I immediately flinched and shocked daggers at him. I just think you're beautiful. I want to marry you someday. Maybe you have kids. You have beautiful eyes. Thankfully, the bar had cleared out some, and I was able to cross the floor and grab my parker. He kept saying things behind me like, I just want to try romantic things. I then grabbed a random non-creepy man that I had talked to that night who was just leaving and said, Hey, are you walking to the subway? And I went with them. My recently professed suitor followed us. I remember him perfectly wearing a tan waterproof jacket, standing right outside the bar door looking at me. The guy I was walking with was going in the company in opposite direction of the subway line, but I wasn't about to risk going down to my own line alone and waiting. It was past midnight, so trains took slightly longer to arrive. Most train stations have an option to switch directions if you mess up without paying again, so I figured I'd go down with my bodyguard of sorts, make him stand with me near the direction change, and if I saw the creep coming, I'd book it and pray a car came in time. We had an app that showed estimated arrival times. It was just my luck that that specific station was undergoing repairs. And it was either get your direction right on the first try, or perish. No direction change in sight. So I did what in my two mojito fight or flight mode had to do. I ran back up the stairs and tried to pay again. Except the card I used was one of those cards that once you scan, you can't use again within five minutes. I wasn't going to wait that long, and I could hear someone coming down the subway stairs. Paris Subway had tunstals, but it also had doors that only open once you scan. So I sucked in my breath as much as I could, went under the turnstile, and squeezed through my tiny space between the door. I have no idea how I made it past when my Parker on adrenaline is one hell of a drug. I had just managed to make it downstairs when the train was arriving. But as I turned around, I saw him on the sort of bridge area overlooking the train tracks. I managed to grow out my biggest, meanest no, and then said something like, I want to grow old with you. Give me your number. The train doors open and I walked insides backwards, making eye contact with him, saying no again. 
Luckily, that's just about one of the most universal words out there. I'm thankful to the Friday night 1am Paris subway crowd. They all seemed confused, but they had the right spirit. A couple of girls waved over so I could stand with them until the door closed, and they went with me until I had to change lines. I felt safer on the two minute walk from the subway to my apartment than near that guy in my neighborhood was kind of known for being a big crack hotspot. At least the crackheads left me alone. So if anyone takes something away from this, just be mean. Be rude as hell. I tried being mean a little too late and got one of the creepiest love confessions of my life. A stalker in into the subway and a story to tell on here.